Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and as you can see I'm doing another run of Runebound the third edition. I played it the other day and man I still like this game a lot. Last week was the first time I actually tried out the core rules that come with the Unbreakable Bonds expansion here. Some of my friends didn't really like it that much. I still did. And so yeah, I wanted to really give this another spin. And if I've never tried the solo rules before, I think let's focus on the solo rules in this game. Really not so different from the um, core version of the game. But yeah, let's try it out anyway. On a different note, I also want to welcome Ron as a new patron on my Patreon page. Really thank you so much for your support. And now let's see how things go, shall we? Okay, and here we are. I decided to go with a Red Death scenario. The main reason for that is this was the scenario we played the other day. And I believe I have understood most of the mechanics. There is a debate on the geek around um, Act 2, but I think I will come to that later on. I think I got it right, but maybe I <laughs> didn't catch it. So then perfectly fine for you to make me aware of how to play this right. Right now we can start right away. Let's get into the theme a little bit. The Red Death in the towns and cities of Terranoth. A strange fever is spreading. It turns the skin and eyes red and it is accompanied by painful pustules and boils. Yeah, that's pretty much our goal, getting rid of all those active plays. Then we will win the game. And again, I'm playing this solo right now. So basically during setup, we have placed, I believe, nine of those dormant tokens here, dormant plague tokens here. Those are the white ones. So we can enter into those spaces without any penalties. And randomly, I determine that this is more or less ground C. Zero. This is being determined by one of those story cards here, Ground Zero, maybe, what do we want to have a look at it? The outbreak began in the streets of this city. So we infected this random city and infecting always means we have to flip a dormant token to the active plague site. Then we can move into, or if we move into the space, we take two hits right off the bat and then we can spend an action in order to quarantine the city, which then means we flip it back to the dormant site Problem is we cannot do this with a ground zero. We need to find a cure or basically ingredients to find the cure. And in a one play or in a solo game, we need two of those ingredients that we will find all over here in Terranoth under one of those encounter spaces, pretty much. I decided to go with Tatiana, who is a character from the Unbreakable Bonds expansion, and I never played with her, so I think, yeah, let's totally go for it. Those are her combat tokens. Her special abilities are as follows. One with a while at the start of your turn, you may, if you are in the wilderness, you may move one hex. Always a nice thing. Moving one, moseying into an adjacent space is always a great thing. And during combat, as a crack shot, so I can spend a surge, deal one X and damage for each of your unspent X tokens. Can be nice, but I don't know. Good thing is her hand size is a four, uh, but we only have eight health. And yeah, we are rolling the standard three terrain dice whenever we move or explore. We already have drawn our skill cards. I prepared the deck totally randomly. I took six of, I think, 11 there are right now, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, basically chose six out of them by rolling a die. And those are the four cards we have. The only really cool one here is the Hiker, to be honest. Once per turn, you may test strength, move up to X hexes where X is the number of successes you got. So again, another great thing um, to move around the map. And I think playing this solo, especially this scenario, moving around the map or being able to move around the map is key, I guess. Once per turn, you may exert to allow to follow the instructions on one of your quests, even if you are not in the required hexes, you still must spend. That's pretty nice too, to be honest, but it costs us four trophies. And by the way, we start the game with one trophy and I went for the green one here because that was the only real card we needed. Ride the wind. If you roll at least two wilds while moving, you may move to any hex instead of spending terrain dice. Very, very nice. And also, Basically, those two are right now my favorites and yeah, bulked up pretty much gives us one strength. Um, can be nice. We already have two strength overall. She is a pretty balanced character and I think this could be key 
winning this game. Um, when we played this scenario, basically last week, Thursday, we really didn't stand a chance. Main reason for that is there were two newbies in the game and it seems that's really not the easiest scenario in the deck. Given that I only played the corpse scenario, basically this is the first time myself. Um, so I'm not sure if I played it correctly either. So in respect to strategy and whatnot, I think not one single party skill came out. This was maybe already a bad thing, but a lot of those others were really struggling with a vast amount of skills and asset cards that are out in the board. One character, one player really got lucky. He always drew the wrong enemies, casted the wrong tokens and was basically defeated every single round of combat. And he really hated this game. But yeah, I still love it. And I think let's get into this. Um, the reason why I started here at Hunter's Circle, so pretty much a shrine, so she starts at shrines, is because we are right now nearby Dawnsmoor. And in Dawnsmoor we have this nice bearded axe here waiting for us. It's not the greatest um, card or item in the world, but it only costs us three and gives us uh, basically another token, a combat token. And yeah, you know, combat tokens are key winning combats actually. And it also has a golden symbol here. So overall, I think definitely not too expensive. Unfortunately, we're only starting with two gold, so we cannot go for it right away. But there is a combat encounter here, which we most likely would get into. And then if we are able to defeat whatever is Beneath that, we can move back to Dawnsmoor and hopefully we have some money to buy this Bearded X. And I think we really need it as quickly as possible. And I think without further ado, again, I will explain all the rules as I go. And again, bear with me. I'm pretty sure I will miss one or two things. That's always the case. I will definitely also make some wrong choices with those combat boards. I'm not really that trained. Again, I only played it once with those combat boards. But again, bear with me, make me aware of my mistakes and I will try to play it right as of, I don't know, the next episode. Okay, I think we will start moving here towards, I think towards this, but of course we make it dependent on our roll. We will roll three terrain dice. So let's see what we will roll here. Yeah, I think, okay, we can basically move anywhere with this result, but I think let's stick to the plan. So we need one plane symbol. Here another plane symbol. We can also go for this um, wild, but doesn't really matter. We wanted to move here. One, two, this was our first of three actions, by the way. Maybe I should have mentioned this. And then I think we want to uh, adventure, I think is the action, not explore, adventuring here. And this costs us two actions, which means we will flip it. And this also ends our turn. Of course, we get to resolve our card here. So let's see what we get. And it seems to be a standard enemy. So there is no symbol here that shows it belongs to the red death scenario. 10 out of 30 cards are really scenario driven more or less or will be added to the deck of those adventure cards here. And yeah, we have the razor ring, a savage a creature. So we go with a savage battle board. Um, it has the following search ability, strike, deal one damage. Hmm hurts a little bit and it flies cancel the next attack made against you this combat round Whew. tough but they're all doing two and i think we will start with the first one i guess but yeah let's prepare the battle board or combat board or whatever it is those are the five tokens for the savage character and this is really nice actually that each of those enemies now come with kind of different token pool they're not too different but at least they're yeah a little bit focused on on what they do we will only have those three really really bad and yeah i think let's start casting and i really hope i'm not messing around with all of those tokens on the board and i'm using my dice tower you might wonder but it works pretty well so i will give it a quick shuffle in my hand and yes i'm using coin capsule apparently so we will go first here Mm, that's not great. It's one golden symbol, one magical deck damage and one tactics. Hmm. Hmm, really not great. So let's see what the savage is doing here. When you engage your foreign combat, deal one damage. Okay, I get one damage right off the bat. Let's not forget that. Maybe let's do that. I'd rather do it in a second. So let's cast it accordingly and that's the result for the savage we now place those tokens on the board accordingly it goes here no this goes 
there. Then we have a shield and yet another of those. I will still take one damage because of the special ability. So we are off to a good start and I didn't roll one single, not even the search and wow, not one of those axes. This really hurts. I think we will go first because we have cast more golden symbols than our opponent who didn't cast one single one actually. And in a tie, the attacker also always wins. Oof, that's tough. Um, yeah, I think I have to start. I could use the tactics to block some damage, um, but I really want to bring him down actually. So yeah, I think I will use the tactics to copy this magical damage symbol here, which means he will defend. So that's one piece of damage because again, we are copying this. So this is out. We didn't inflict any damage. This is out too, pretty much. So this is what, what, it do, uh, what he does. Then it's the uh, Savage, so the Razor Wing. He will start from top to bottom. He will spend one search. He only has one search ability. Uh, I think this is good. Hmm, that's now a tricky piece. And I think, no, I think he will do one damage. Yeah, I think he will do one damage instead. Let's go from top to bottom. So yeah, he will spend it. So we will get yet another point of damage. That's because of his card. It says one damage. So we are already at two damage out of eight. Hurts like crazy. Then it's our turn. We will do one magical damage, which means, yeah, hooray, he takes one damage. So he's basically down to four health. Then it's again him. Um, he cannot do this because cancel the next attack made against you this combat round. And I think mm, this is now tough and uh, maybe I should have. No, I, I really should have made this the other way around. Sorry, guys, um, I have to take this back. So I think with his first surge, he basically blocked my neck damage because if he ever has to make a choice, he will basically make the most detrimental choice. So he basically canceled my next attack made against you this combat round. This was my magical damage. So this doesn't do anything. And now he's doing this second search ability, which is one piece of damage to us. And then yes, he does the same thing again. Basically, he's now attacking. So I have to pass because the only thing I have is this one. And yeah, then he will do two more damage. So I'm already at five. So I'm pretty sure I will be defeated in a second. Really off to a very, very bad start. But this was the first round of combat. And now I get to choose if I want to run or not. I think it doesn't really make a big of a difference. So let's do that too. I think that's a little bit better. At least we made some damage here. Oops, sorry for that. Unfortunately, no gold symbol whatsoever. Then he will cast its thing. Oh wow, a charge. So let me do this, another one here, another one there and here. So he will go first, that's for sure, because he has two gold versus my zero. He will start with this and I'm pretty sure, ha, huh, that's not tough. Will he make damage or will he block my next damage? And I think he will do damage. Yeah, I think he wants to take me out because with three damage, yeah, he will kill me. So that's the first one. That's me, I think, oh wow. He does it too. Um, then I will do my stuff and I think I will spend those. Yeah, those three damage. He has doesn't have any shield whatsoever. So he will take three damage, but yeah, it will not be enough. Next, he will do this. He doesn't have a shield, so it doesn't get a plus one, uh, which means he simply makes one more, does one more damage. I think we are now at seven out of eight. And then it's our turn. We can do one more magical damage and we are one short now. Can you believe this? And then he will finish us off with those two um, normal damage here. Wow, this really sucks. Wow, one more damage. Uh, but I think I took it basically back. You, you, you remember that, that, that he first spent his damage and then the fly ability. But I think again, in this case, 
yeah, makes makes really sense. He would have done this. And if I would have played against a human character, more or less, he would have done the same, making meaningful choices. So, but overall, I'm defeated. So this card is simply discarded. Wow, those were the two bucks we needed, or basically one out of those two would have been enough. So that was really, 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 really a bad start. Hmm. Yeah, that's bad. Okay, then, yeah, that's pretty much the end of the round. So we move the time token one step ahead. We will draw our first story card. And those are always scenario related. Protective measures. You wrap cloth around your face and tighten your gloves. You do not know if it will help, but you are not taking chances. Even a single careless touch could infect you. Each hero tests, um, oh, I don't know, is it mind, I believe. If he or she fails, infect the city or town near it to his or her ex. Oh, that's really crap. I have a zero, but I'm going down to zero. So I'm not going down to minus one. That's the Akemora rule. We are no longer doing this. So I can now exert in order to at least test once. And I think, yeah, let's do that. So we will discard this card here, which allows me to draw an additional card from the skill deck. Yeah, and this skill deck is pretty much the die for those kind of skill tests. So this card is gone. This allows us to draw one of those cards. Yeah, and unfortunately it's not a success. Usually there would have been a small little star symbol. So I can exert again and I think let's do that. So I will discard the possess card here in order to draw yet another card. And yes, this time I was lucky. Awesome stuff. This is a success we needed. So we are not doing or not infecting the city or town nearest to his or This was actually important because if this really starts to go south then we have to run all around the country and quarantine Tiny quarantining this, this, this cities that's really bad. Okay, this was basically the story card, and unfortunately, there's something to do on our scenario sheet. After moving the time token, which we just did, roll to infect using two times players or two dice. Before rolling, each hero may become delayed, reduce the number of dice rolled by one. I'm not sure if I want to do that, and pretty much for every uh, while we are then rolling, the nearest city gets infected. So this is how the disease more or less spreads. Right now, I'm still here defeated on this combat spot. The enemy is long gone and um, we could now be delayed. This is still something we can do. And, ooh, and then we can move. We can still... Hmm. Not sure if I want to do that. No, I don't because I need to rest and I need to take two more actions. I think no, let's not rest here. So let's be bold. So we will roll simply two of those terrain dice. And again, for each while that is rolled, no, we are good. We would infect one. I would call it nearest city here. Okay, this was already the end of the round. Let's do one more. We still get to use our special ability. Even though we are defeated, we can use the one with the wild here. At the start of your turn, if you are in the wilderness, which we are, you may move one hex. So let's totally do that. And I think let's move in here to this road. Now we have still three actions. The problem is we are defeated. So the only thing that we are allowed to do is to rest. Um, so yeah, let's let's rest. Um, resting in a wilderness space means we have to roll three dice, basically equal to our value, and each die that basically matches our current hex, we get to heal one wound. So let's do that. That's okay-ish. At least one was enough, actually. That's that's perfectly fine. So we have two symbols that match our terrain here, which means we can basically remove two pieces of damage. So we are no longer defeated, so we can basically continue to move. And I think this is what we will do with our second action. We will move towards Stones more because there are other great cards there. So we will roll the movement dice again. It doesn't really matter because we are on a road, so we can use any dice and we can use any die to move into this city. So this can be this, this is this, and bam. We have made it into Dawn Small. Right now the plague is dormant here, so we don't um, get any extra damage because otherwise we would have been defeated again. Hooray! Then we have still one more action and I think, hmm, I'd rather heal or do the market because healing is something I can do later on too. So I think, yeah, let's... 
let's do the market action. And uh, the way how this works is we draw one extra card from the asset deck, something I have assembled also totally randomly. I think in the meantime, we have six different decks. Yes, I believe. And you're use, uh, choosing three of those totally randomly. I assigned the deck here to emulation 11. Okay, that's totally out of the question. And then I get to either discard one of those four cards or I get to buy one of those uh, four cards. Unfortunately, I still cannot buy the bearded axe, but I can go for those artifacts, which costs us zero, but I can trade those in at a shrine, basically spending an action to get two uh, money out of this. And this is not too bad. So let's grab the artifacts. Those will slide down. So this is now the new offer in Dawnsmo. We have one good here. And yeah, the idea is to move to one of those shrines here, for example. But of course, we also need to do exploration here. So wow, a lot going on. Um, and really, Going down the first time was really bad. Maybe I really should have moved to Dawnsmo right off the bat, taking the artifacts and go back and forth. But again, this costs us an extra turn. And again, we were only one piece of damage away here. So that's, that's really, really, really a pity. But again, this was the end of the round again. Yes, absolutely. So let's move the time token. We still have to roll for the infection, I think. Again, I cannot afford to delay myself. So I will simply roll two dice. Oof, lucky. Uh, maybe this was, yeah, maybe I really should have healed first, to be honest. But we were lucky. No further infection here. That's the case, and it's the end of the round. And I think, yeah, let, let's let's do one more. I think the first thing that we want to do here in Dawnsmo is to rest because we are in a city or in a civilized tax. That is, we can basically heal all of our damage for free, which is really a huge difference to the second edition of Rumor because there being defeated or getting a lot of wounds is absolutely penalizing to be honest so it's really expensive healing those wounds and, and and whatever and stuff like that so that's really one of the major differences here uh, that was our first action already uh, now I really think do I want to train first or do I want to move to this shrine here or maybe there's also a shrine down there madman's pass and there are more tokens down there. So I think overall this would have made more sense. So I could really move, hope for the best, and then maybe do a training action because I cannot flip this token here, but I think I need to do that. Yeah, let's 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 move anyway. I think moving is definitely out of the question. We will move for sure. And yeah, that's really bad actually. Um, oh, come on, are you kidding me? Yeah, we can only move in here. Or we could do at least this, but then we are not here either. But we could go for this damage thing down here, but really going into a fight, or we will go down here and at least do something there next turn and then move down. Yeah, why not? Let's move down here. We have one more action left. Unfortunately, this is not enough to flip this token here. We need two actions, keep that in mind. There's a cool skill out there. I don't know if it's in the deck here or not, which can basically allows you to only spend one action to flip those, but yeah, we don't have it apparently. So we have one more action left and I think let's train, which means we will for, draw four of those skill cards, basically our hand size numbers, and then we can basically have to dis discard down to, um, again. Whenever your foe triggers the things before we saw steal your foe. Oh, that's an expensive one. No, let's not keep this. Once per turn when you would draw an adventure card, you may draw one card from a different adventure deck instead. Hmm, nice. This is okay. The jack of all trades. I think we want to hold on to this. We can trigger it twice. And when your turn begins, you may draw one if you have no active credit. It's also nice. Yeah, let's let's keep those four cards. We will discard the other two. And again, that's the end of the round. That's how quick Room Bowden can feel. So let's progress the time token. Let's roll again for infection. Again, I think I don't want to no, I can't. I really can't choose to delay. We have made zero progress, guys. Um, keep that in mind. That's really, really bad. So let's roll for the infection. Faction. No, we are good again, and I'm keep knocking over those <laughs> adventure jams here. Pretty nice 
job and i think yeah let's do one more round one final round and i think yeah let's let's totally do that so with our first two actions we want to flip this social quest of some sort so we will draw our first purple card here and again it's a basic card network of spies a group of men approach you and offer you their nefarious services for a fee of course so we can now make a choice let's go with a quick one here test um, the eye ability to glean useful information from the spies take this card as a trophy this is always nice taking these cards as trophies helps us leveling up our character pretty nice we can keep this card as a rumor hire the spies for your own gain we have to spend one gold to keep this card the next time another hero within three spaces of you gains a trophy there are no other trophies in the core version of the game this is pretty nice actually and um, I need to check if I can discard this card now actually because it says another hero but then again all of those are um, pretty much win another hero so I think yeah let's let's simply go for this second ability here so we have one eye which means we get to draw one card again we can exert to do that again this is not a success unfortunately so I think yeah let's hmm. Let's get rid of this jack of all trades to exert so we can draw again. And yes, awesome. Pursuit of knowledge. This is a success. So we get to keep this card as a trophy. Nice. Because that means I have now two trophies and I can train pretty much for free before or after I take an action. And I think I want to train. So I want to train the Ride the Wind special ability. Would be better for a character who rolls four terrain dice, but that's still good enough. If you roll at least two success to whilst while moving, you may move to any hex instead of spending terrain dice. And again, movement is key in this scenario, basically everywhere in Runebound. So yes, let's totally learn this card. So those those cards simply get discarded. I still have one more action, so I guess let's try to move actually. Um, and I noticed some some adventure gems were here that weren't supposed to be here. They were basically way up north. So let's roll our dice. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Only one. Oh, that's really crap. Yeah, I think huh, we can still spend one card to exert actually. Um, poof. and I think, do I need to do that? Maybe not. One, two, and three. No, that's fine, I guess. So let's move in here into the mountains. Again, this was already the end of my turn. Pity, yeah, let's move the time token. Time for yet another story card. And here we have the dire straits. The town of Terrin towns of Terrinoth offer a little sanctuary to those hoping to escape the plague. Story quest. In order to quarantine a town, a hero must also spend one gold. A hero can ignore this card if he or she has at least three... Um, I think it's mind. Yeah, I think it's mind. A hero in a town with plague may spend one ingredient... May spend one one ingredient to cure the plague. I really had to think about this for quite some time. A hero in town with a plague may spend one in green to cure the plague, which means I think in this case you can still go there, um, spend one in green, which is incredibly expensive, and then cure the plague, which means the token gets removed. But wow, I need two ingredients to find an overall cure and do this stuff. <sighs> wow. Not sure if this is great, but I think these cards are not supposed to be great, actually. And this is how I understand it, because again, we still normally have to find the cure, basically placing two of those on the ground zero card. And then we can basically take an action to cure the plague, the active side of the cure, which we can only do again if we have found the cure. But again, this is a little rule breaker here. You, if you carry an ingredient, you can still do that um, in that town, I guess. Let's roll for the infection. And again, I can make a choice. Do I want to delay myself? Not sure if I want to take this one out here, but there is another resting space here anyway. So I think we can actually risk it. Yeah, we will delay ourselves, which means we will remove one die from this. And let's 
let's see no it's not cool so overall we are at least doing somewhat lucky in respect to those infection roads here but of course now i'm delayed so i have to spend my very first action to stand up then i can take this and maybe if i'm lucky hmm i can still then move down to the madman's pass here as the next turn because of my free move here and then i can take an action so overall not too bad actually uh, oh no i think i made a mistake no i'm fine i'm good no no i'm good i was just thinking maybe i should have trained instead of delaying before i go into the combat but i think there is really not much i can do with my skills in combat so i don't have to exert myself i don't have any abilities right now so i think that's okay and I guess I want to end my playthrough for today. Those were at least four rounds of Runebound. Um, the first fight really took incredibly long. So this was the majority of this episode, I think. I really hope you're enjoying my little playthrough here, even though I'm playing this now for the third time on my channel. Again, a huge thank you to all of my patrons out there. Really appreciate your support. And again, if you want to support the show, the channel, then please check out my Patreon on patreon and yeah hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and until then bye bye